Uh, talk to us about how the chips business has evolved here. Well, it's no rocket business or flamethrower business, but I find it quite interesting. I know Apple does as well. It's evolved over the past several years as Apple's come out with new chips for each of its devices in successive years. They now have an AI chip. They have all sorts of process for processors for displays, Face ID, other components. And it's a, it's a worrisome situation for the likes of Intel and Qualcomm, two of the bigger chip makers in the world. Is this part of Tim Cook, who you know was the COO of Apple, the guru of Apple supply chain, putting a stamp on the company, perhaps a realization that this it would be the better way to go for Apple? I mean, I have to tell you, Tim Cook deserves all the credit in the world for coming up with you know ways to build as many devices as Apple sells, 300 million devices a year. It's now a you know several hundred million dollar company. But it was actually Steve Jobs, Tim Cook's predecessor and the company co-founder, who came up with this idea that the company should own the underlying technologies in its devices in order to make better hardware and software for the user to interact with. So this is more of a, a Steve Jobs decision that has sort of trickled down uh, over the course of the past decade or so. So walk us through what kind of chips Apple makes now and what they might make in the future. Yeah, I mean, I think the, the list is, is too long and complex to, you know, to list off. You can please, anyone viewing this can see our in-depth chart and graphics by the Bloomberg data visualization team. It gives a good look at this. But they make specific motion chips for tracking your steps. They make a processor for the Apple Watch and the AirPods to pair over Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. They make the main engine, the system on a chip that has multiple packs of components on it for both the Apple Watch and the iPhone, the iPad, now the HomePod and the Apple TV. They make a processor called the Neural Engine for processing artificial intelligence tasks. And more recently, they have these T1 and T2 Mac coprocessor chips for Macs. And why that's really interesting to our viewers is that Intel stockholders, they might be interested in this because Intel has Apple as its fifth biggest customer. And Apple is clearly working year over year to knock Intel eventually out of its machines uh, into the future. Now, the chip industry itself is obviously highly competitive. It's also consolidating. How does Apple, and Apple's a huge customer of a lot of these companies, how does Apple taking this on impact the rest of the companies that depend on Apple as a customer? Right. I mean, two of the bigger companies that may be affected here are Intel and Qualcomm. Qualcomm is already taking some heat. They're in this big patent battle, tons of litigation between Qualcomm and Apple now. Apple is already working to kick Qualcomm out from the modem side of its devices, starting with the iPhone coming out later this year. Uh, we've reported they're looking at providers such as Intel and MediaTek to take on modems. And modems is the component that allows the phone to actually connect to the internet to cellular data and make phone calls. So they'll be kicking Qualcomm out of there as early as this year. Longer term, we've noticed a ramp up in hiring of former Qualcomm engineers working on modem chips uh, by Apple in recent months. So it could indicate that Apple's looking to that as well. Intel's affected because Apple eventually wants to kick them out of the Macs in order to control more of the underlying tech inside the Mac computer. Thank you.